Many of us seated here, we may be Muslims who were born Muslims. Mashallah, we have parents. We need to fulfill the rights of our parents. The Quran has instructed us, Surah Luqman, the advice of Luqman alayhi salam to his son to save himself from disaster, from calamity. He gave his son some beautiful advice. Some of it was regarding parents. Subhanallah. And this advice is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah chose your parents, whether they are Muslim or not, Allah chose them. Whether they are good or not, Allah chose them. Whether they are sinful or not, Allah chose them. Why did he choose them? As a test for you. That's what it is. It was a test. Allah created you in order to bring you here. He chose a path. That path, he decided it. Whether you like it or not, that's your father. No matter what he's done, he's your father. You cannot take it away. On the day of judgment, whether he was a terrible man or not, you will be called, called with his name. That's your father. Even if someone took your name away, you will be called with your father's name. On the day of Qiyamah. And I'm not making a mistake there. Subhanallah. That was given to you by Allah. Allah says, Ud'uhum li aba'ihim huwa aqsatu Allah call them with their father's names because that is more just in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so to hide lineage is actually a major sin if you are intentionally hiding someone's lineage then you have perpetrated such a heinous crime that only Allah knows what he will do with such a person Obviously, it would require tawbah. It would require the seeking of forgiveness. So don't hide someone's lineage intentionally. They don't even know who they are. You've hidden it from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah make it easy for us to make amends. But in Surah Luqman, Allah says, Allah has indeed advised you very strongly regarding goodness to your parents. Be kind to your mother, your father. She can be a non-Muslim. He could be a drug addict. Be kind to him. Be kind to her. Be respectful in your words. You do not obey a, an instruction that is against Allah's command. That is for sure. But you still respect the individual. That's your mom. You respect your dad no matter what. You say kind words. If you want to correct them, you correct them in a beautiful way. You do not insult them. You don't swear them. You don't hurt their feelings unnecessarily. Meaning if they are hurt just because you don't want to adopt something haram, they are telling you to adopt, then it is unfortunate. But we are talking of that hurt that comes from you for nothing. Swearing, insulting, cheating, and so on. Your own father. This is a very strong piece of advice. Why? Because your, the parenthood is sacred. That's what it is. It was chosen by Allah. You might not have been brought up by your parents. So what? They are still your parents. They may have abandoned you and dumped you. They failed their test. But you don't fail it as a result. You pray for them. You may not want to associate with parents who are toxic because nothing good comes out of them. But be kind to them. There's nothing that stops you from being good in your words. Subhanallah, keep praying. Why not? They could, they could change as a result of your dua. So this is a piece of advice. Every day we are speaking about how parents are actually abusing their children. Today, we are speaking about how children are abusing their parents. That's your mother. I promise you to hurt the feelings of your mother. You will pay a heavy price. Yes, it is a different thing if your mother just feels hurt for any small thing, subhanallah. You know, she wants you to stand on one leg and if you don't, she gets hurt. That's ridiculous. But we're talking about that which is normal, that which is completely acceptable. And you begin to insult your mother. You begin to talk to her as though she is your child or your baby. And you begin to talk to her as though she works for you and she is fit for all the worst words possible. Be careful, watch your tongue. My brother, you want to get to Allah. My sister, you want to come closer to Allah. Do it through your parents. The Prophet ﷺ says, At loss is a person who has witnessed one or both of his or her parents and has not earned Jannah through their service. At old age, you witnessed your parents. You need to help them. When you were a kid, they took you wherever they could. They cleaned you, they cleansed you, they fed you. 
Had they not done that, you probably would have been dead. One might argue, well, my parents didn't look after me. So what? If they failed their test, you don't have to fail your test as a result. You don't get the answers wrong. Respect them. Still, say a good word. So that is the point I want to drive home today. My brothers and sisters, it's absolutely important that we go out of our way to respect our parents, no matter who they are. Muslim, non-Muslim, sinful or pious, no matter, even if they are being a burden, even if they are making our lives so difficult, respect them, say a kind word. When they are wrong and you have to disobey something that they are saying because it's in the transgression of Allah or they are being ridiculous and you have to fight your parents in front of the ulama because sometimes they might be, let me give you a simple example, they might be blocking a marriage for no reason besides that which is their own whims and fancies and you are going to an arbitrator to seek a middle path, you may do so but respectfully. If your father was wrong, he is wrong and inshallah he will be proven wrong but with respect. So you don't compromise the respect issue. I hope you've understood it. That's the thing we're talking about. Because today people think, you know, my dad is wrong. He, that's it. They call them bad words. Be careful. That dad was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, that was just a verse from Surah Luqman. There are still so many verses in Surah Luqman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this man, Luqman, told his son, so many things. One of them was that you can never hide from Allah, no matter what you do, no matter where, whatever is, whether it is inside of a rock or at the bottom of a rock or in the darkest part of the earth, Allah will bring it forth. No matter how small it is, you can never ever hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the things that we as young people oftentimes eagerly anticipate and wish and dream for when we're young is to arrive at that stage and age in our lives when we're completely independent and completely self-sufficient. We want to throw back those days and those years of being dependent on other people. But in all of that, there is a danger in fact. There is a danger in our search for self-sufficiency and independence in forgetting those who we were completely dependent upon when we were very young. One of the things the Quran calls great attention to and the Prophet made much mention of, peace be upon him, is the responsibility that we owe and the debt that we owe to our parents. In the Quran, for example, Allah, God, he says, that he has enjoined upon man to be dutiful to his parents. His mother bore him with struggle, weaning him, uh, laboring after him, um, exerting her effort for him uh, with the toil after a toil, with the travail after travail. And the child was completely dependent on his mother for a good period of two years. So Allah then says, so thank me who of course created you and your mother and made that situation possible uh, in the first place. Allah says, thank me and thank your parents. To me is the final end or the, or the destination or the journey. In other verse in the Quran, Allah said that he has enjoined upon man uh, or God has ordained that you worship only him and that you show goodness and kindness to your parents. And so the verse then commands us that if your parents reach old age, not to even say the word uff to them, not to get fed up with them or tired with them, uh, and do not hold them in, in scorn or reprimand them, but simply say, but, but say a good word unto them. And Allah says that lower the wings of humility unto them, out of mercy for them, and say this as a prayer that my Lord have mercy on them uh, as they tended to me and cherished me when I was very young. And it's a, a beautiful collection of verses from the Quran and it teaches us as Muslims and as human beings the responsibility that we owe and the debt that we owe to our parents because we were dependent on them. Uh, and now just because we've uh, arrived at the age of independence and self-sufficiency, it gives us no excuse to forget that debt that we owe upon them. It's amazing, interesting in fact, how the Prophet's companions uh, may Allah be pleased with all of them, uh, acted out this great injunction in the Quran and how they learned this level of mercy and compassion from the Prophet himself, peace be upon him. One of his great companions called Abu Huraira was someone, interestingly enough, who uh, had a difficult time with his mother. She delayed in becoming a Muslim. She wasn't very interested and she uh, was happy to stick to her, her, her pagan and false practices in the beginning. 
And on one occasion, he went and he complained to the Prophet about her and says, Please pray for my mother that she becomes a Muslim. And the Prophet immediately raised his hands and said, oh Allah, guide the mother of this individual, Abu Huraira. By the time he returned home, his mother had uh, become a Muslim, in fact, in his absence. And it was a, a miracle, a proof of the prophethood of the Prophet, peace be upon him. But the beautiful thing in the relationship between mother and child, between mother and son in this case, is the fact that whenever Abu Huraira would uh, meet and greet his mother, he would say, Assalamu alaikum ya umata wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you, my dear and beloved mother, and the mercy of Allah and his blessings upon you. Rahimakillah kama rabbaytani sagira. May Allah have mercy on you because of how you tended to me and cherished me when I was young. And in reciprocating that great love, uh, she would then say, Wa alaikas salam ya bunay wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And may Allah have mercy on you, my beloved son, and may his peace and, and blessings be upon you also, and his mercy and blessings on you also. May Allah have mercy on you because of how you're looking after me now that I'm old. And it's a beautiful illustration of the, uh, the uh, rights and responsibilities and in fact the relationship that should exist between the mother and the child. The Prophet was extremely concerned about that. He was concerned, in fact, a man once asked him, what is the best deed? What is the most beloved deed or action to Allah? And the Prophet said, it, it is to pray on time. That is the most beloved action to Allah. And then the man said, well, what next then? And then the Prophet said, Birrul walidain, to show goodness to your parents is the next best action. And then the man said, what next? And he said, struggling in the cause of God is the best action after that. It isn't simply, it isn't exclusive, in fact, to the mother, but it also extends to the father, both of them. That is the injunction in the Quran. Um, and so we find, some interesting illustrations of that. In, in one occasion, for example, the Prophet's uh, companion, one of his companions, uh, noticed an individual who was walking towards him, and behind him was another individual who was older in age. And so he asked the first one, Who is this person? Man ma'ak. Who is this one with you but behind you? He's with you but behind you. And the man said, He's my father. And he was completely astonished and bewildered. And he said, if he's your father, then out of respect for him, do not walk in front of him and do not sit before he sits and do not call him by his first name, just out of simple respect for him. In another instance, a prophet's companion was riding a camel and he was wearing a, a, a turban and it was a very hot day in Medina and, and a man walked past and he was, uh, and he, he immediately got off his camel and he took off his turban and he put it on the man's head and he said, ride this camel. And the, and the man's companions and friends, his entourage, were quite amazed. Why would he do something like that? And so he uh, said to them, I did this because indeed I heard from the Prophet himself, peace be upon him, that it is from the essence of piety. It is from real piety that you show goodness to the friends of your father after your father has passed away. And the beautiful thing about this tradition is the fact that this man was not simply the friend of this man's father. He was the son of the friend of the father. And so it shows therefore how far the Prophet's companions extended this in injunction of the Prophet, peace be upon him. There are so many other examples. One of them, my, my favorite ones in fact, is, is on this occasion when a man came to Ibn Omar, this Prophet's very close companion, and he said to him, look, I carried my mother on my back or on my shoulders uh, for the pilgrimage to Mecca for the Hajj and she's old and she's frail and she's weak and she's unable to do it by herself and so I facilitated that for her, I did it for her, I, I carried her on my back on my shoulders and uh, he then said to her, he then said to him Atarani jazaytuha, do you think I've now paid her back? Have I fulfilled my obligation and rights upon her by, by, by doing that for her? I understand, of course, that she did so much for me when I was young and small and she looked after me, but now I've done something back for her. I've, I've done that as an action uh, to almost recompense and pay her back. Do you think that is enough? And uh, Ibn Umar, he turned to this man, he looked him in the eyes and he said, Look, not even for one contraction have you paid your mother back. 
not even for one contraction during her pregnancy, the pain of labor. Have you paid your mother back? There is no way you could ever do that. And this is why it's so important for us to remember that and to remember that the, the great responsibility we have on our parents to, to make sure that they are properly maintained and fed and clothed just like they uh, cared for us and fed and clothed us during our days of infancy. In fact, in the Quran, there is a verse that pertains to spending. And it relates to a question that the Prophet's companions asked the Prophet. Yes, They ask you, what should we spend our money on? And you might think it's good to spend on this and that and this and that. But in the Quran, Allah says that um, everything, say, whatever you spend of good should be for the first group of people are your parents, your parents and your near of kin. And, your, and the orphans and the poor and everything of good you spend, Allah is aware of it. So the first group that Allah identifies in this verse that pertains to spending money is in fact your parents. And in the age of uh, consumerism, when we think of course that we would spend, should spend money on ourselves to satisfy our own needs and interests, <coughs> Allah turns our attention towards our parents. <coughs> but don't forget the responsibility you have towards them to spend on them. And so in this time of uh, pseudo-independence and self-sufficiency, we should remember as Muslims and as people never to overstep the mark and the limit. In the Quran, Allah says, and indeed man, he transgresses the limits when he sees himself to be self-sufficient and independent. We should be of those who remember the great obligation we owe to our parents for the many great things they've done for us when we've been young, and not to now undermine them and to uh, act in, in haste and with heedlessness towards our uh, older years when they have also aged. We should remember to care for them and respect and love them and never to abuse them and never to reprimand and scold them, but to always wish the best for them and to help them uh, and assist them. May Allah make us of those who are like this and to be the best of children, uh, the best of parents and the best of Muslims uh, all the time. <laughs>